Okay, this sermon is entitled, People Who Do Not Read the Bible. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 87 reads, His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God, Selah. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about reading the Bible, and there are lots of people out there that will not read it, and I'd like to go over some of the consequences of not reading it. Number one, for those that do not read the Bible much, or maybe they used to read it, the Bible talks about, in Hebrews chapter 1, well, the Word of God you know, slipping or drifting away, and that's what happens if we do not continue to read it. We will forget you know, what it says. And it reads in verse uh, 1 of chapter 2, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? So we see here that the word of God is steadfast. The Word of God is powerful. The Word of God it has a, you know, a changing effect on people's lives. But that's why we need to not let the Word of God slip away. And that's why we should keep reading it on a daily basis. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we see an example of people that are not understanding God's Word. Perhaps they're not reading it enough. And the Apostle Paul is addressing these people as babes in Christ. It reads in verse 1, and we'll stop at verse 6, and it reads, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual... But as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk, and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. What he's saying is that, you know, carnality due to being a spiritual babe and not understanding God's word very well would lead to people, you know, looking up to certain teachers instead of, you know, God himself who has appointed such teachers. And we see what's going on here. Because of this spiritual immaturity, we see lots of, you know, envying and strife divisions and carnality and people walking as men so that's why it's so important to get into the word every day and and we're going to look at the difference between you know milk and strong meat let's take a look at hebrews chapter 5 we see another example of people that perhaps did study the word of god erstwhile but then all of a sudden they they backslid and the bible addresses this in verse 10 of chapter 5 of hebrews it says called of god and high priest after the order of melchizedek of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, we go from the milk to the meat. And we see two different types of people. The people that are not very well versed in God's word, these people need to go back and relearn it. In this case, they have recidivated back to a previous state of, of spiritual immaturity. And that's why it says they are, they are in need of milk and not strong meat. See, once you get on the milk of the word, then you, as you grow, you get on the meat of the word. It, it talks about those that are on the meat of the word, they are, they are skillful in the word and they are able to discern both good and evil. Now, the reason why this is so important is because there's lots of false doctrine out there. And to the unlearned, um, it's all the same. There's no differentiation between good teaching and, and evil teachings. So that's why it's important that we get into the Word of God. It talks about having your senses exercised, and the word there actually means trained, and of course to discern both good and evil. So that this is what happens when we don't get fed the Word of God. Now, if, if a person's not reading the Bible at all, then we have lots of problems. What I was addressing in these passages in the New Testament was the people that were not really getting fed as much as they should. They're not getting an ample meal or three ample meals a day of God's Word, or whatever. But I want to address some, some problems with people that do not read the Bible at all. So let's turn back to the Old Testament, to the book of Second Chronicles. We have some examples of people that are, that are seeking God and people that are not seeking God. So in Second Chronicles chapter 15, it reads in verse 1, And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa, 
and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all, the, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, and the word seek means to desire, to desire God. If ye seek him, he will be found you know, of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Now, we're not talking about loss of salvation, because this is not a salvation issue. This is an issue of having God you know, forsake you in the sense that he's not going to bless you fully. So we see that if, if you seek God, God will be found of you. And that word found actually means he'll be near you or nigh you know, of you. But if you forsake him, if you turn your back on God, and if you just basically close the Bible, because that's, that's how you, you know, stop seeking God, you seek God by reading the Bible, by learning more about him, and then you basically turn your back on God or, or repudiate God by just not reading the Bible, it says he will forsake you. Now, we see some more verses that talk about seeking God and, and gaining his divine providence. Let's take a look at Second Chronicles chapter 14 and verse 11. It says, And Asa cried unto the Lord his God, and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord, our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God, let not man prevail against thee. And then, of course, we see in chapter 15 again in verse 4, it says, And when they in trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. Now turn over to Second Chronicles chapter 24. In Second Chronicles chapter 24, we see another example of people that are turning away from God. These would be the people that don't read the Bible. It says in verse um, 10 of chapter 24, it reads, It says, Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the, unto the Lord. And they testified against them. But they would not give ear. Now, this is an example of people that don't read the Bible. They don't want to give ear to what God has to say. It goes on to say in verse 20, And the Spirit of God came upon you know, Zechariah, the son of Zehoiada, the priest which stood above the people, and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? It goes on to say, Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. Now, what it says here is that if you transgress the commandments of God, and we're just talking about God's word. If you stop reading the Bible, it says you cannot prosper. And then God will forsake you in the sense of he will not give you what you, what you need. He will not bless you. So we see some of the examples of what happens to people when they don't read the Bible. Now let's get to some of the main reasons why people don't read the Bible. A lot of people, they just don't deem the Bible as being you know, very important. They don't realize that it's God's word and that it has a changing effect on people. Other people just don't read it because they're just lazy and they're slothful. We see a couple of verses that talk about this. In Proverbs chapter 12, it says in verse 24, The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Okay, look at verse uh, 27. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. So when people are lazy, that'll keep them from reading the Bible. Now, before I get into you know, some verses that actually encourage us to read the Bible, I'd like to go into three types of people that actually don't read the Bible, but they think that they do. Okay, number one, anyone who's, who's reading a modern translation, one of these false, you know, demonic, corrupt versions. Okay, I have in my hand the, uh, the Good News Bible, you know, today's English version, with a built-in concordance. And this is not the Word of God. And people can claim, you know, all day long that they read the Bible. But if it's not the King James Bible, they're not really reading it. So let's t let me give you some reasons why this is a bunch of garbage, and these Bibles should be trashed. These are not real Bibles. Turn over to Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, we see an entire verse that would be talking about the blood of Jesus Christ, but they take the verse and they just totally, like, truncate it, and they make it worthless. So let me just read Colossians 1 and, and verse 14, and out of this false Bible just to let people know that if you're reading this, you're not really reading the Bible. This is not God's word. Colossians 1.14 reads, By whom we are set free, that is, our sins are forgiven. Okay, it just says we're set free. That could mean anything. Okay, no mention of the blood. Let's take a look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14 out of the King James. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14 is very clear in the King James. And it doesn't say set free. It actually says, you know, redeemed. We have redemption. So let me go ahead and turn there. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, why would these false translations, these NIVs and these, you know, RSVs and the you know, New American Standard, or in this case, the, the TEV, or in this case, the TE, you know, P, today's English perversion would be more befitting or, or condign. Why would these translations have words and, and verses omitted? Because it's not the word of God. 
See, the King James Bible says, you know, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So if anyone reads one of these false modern translations, they're not a Bible reader. They're not reading the Bible. And these Bibles should go straight in the trash. So my point is, is that there are scores of so-called nominal Christians out there that claim they read the Bible, when in fact they're not reading the Bible. Okay, there's another group of people that think they read the Bible when they're not, they're not reading it as well. And these are the unsaved false prophets out there. See, in order, to, in order for a person to understand the Bible, they have to be saved. The Bible says in um, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 7, Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Now, there are people out there that are not saved, and they're false prophets. They're working for Satan. They're not trying to understand God's word. They're not trying to get a lucid understanding of what the scripture says. They're trying to twist it, and they're trying to pervert the word of God. And we see this in 2 Timothy chapter 3. It says in verse um, 5, and we'll skip down to verse, to verse 7, it says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Okay, look at verse 7. Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith but they shall proceed no no further for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was now what do we have here we have people that are picking up their so-called bible maybe it's a false translation in most cases it, it is and they're reading it and they're reading it until blue in the face and then they're just never getting the truth they're ever learning but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth now jesus christ said in john 14 i am the way the truth and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 17, verse 17, it says, Okay, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Now, if you're not saved and you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you'll never get the truth. So these people are not really reading the Bible either. It's all a big show. It's all deception. And they're trying to deceive people anyway. Now, there's a third group of people out there that I, I believe are reading the Bible, but they're not believing it. Just imagine a bunch of unsaved atheists out there trying to disprove the Bible, trying to assert that the Bible has so-called biblical errancies, and it, it's just full of contradictions, and it's full of um, you know, inconsistencies. And these people are not reading the Bible for the right reason. And if they're not saved, it's not going to make sense to them either. So we see another example of, of people reading the Bible that do not believe it. And because of their unbelief, the Word of God has no power, has no effect. So let's take a look at one more verse on this. Then I'm going to get into some verses that encourage us to read the Bible. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, we see in verse 13, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. See, the word of God is the truth. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is effective. And it works in any, in any believer. But see, they have to believe it. If you're some stupid agnostic or some stupid atheist, and you try to pick the Bible up to disprove it, and I've known people that have done tried to do that. They tried to prove the Bible wrong, you know, scientifically, or they tried to make it look like it was just a bunch of, you know, fictive writings that couldn't possibly be true. But see, the Bible says that the natural man receiveth not the things of God. They are spiritually discerned. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit and you don't actually believe what it says, and if you're not actually saved, then the Bible's not going to make sense to you and it's not going to have any effect. So these people are not really reading the Bible either. So now let's go into a few verses that make it clear that we are supposed to be reading the Bible. The Bible encourages this. Let's turn over to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, we see in verse 3, and it reads, It says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now let's turn back to um, 2 Timothy. Let's take a look at chapter 4. It says in verse 13, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Okay, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the, of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. So the Bible tells us we are to read it. We are to read it and to believe it. And we are to, to grow in the Word of God. And let's take a look at a couple more verses in Psalm chapter 1. We see an example of what happens to people when they read the Bible. And these are verses that encourage us to read it as well. I'll close with the, with the whole psalm. It reads, Blessed is the man 
that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Now, notice it says we should, we should delight in God's word. We should, we should love God's word. Okay? We should meditate upon it day and night. We shouldn't limit it to a few minutes every day or to some daily devotion. The Bible says we should meditate upon it day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. See, those that read the Bible, God will prosper them. And it's talking about reading it a lot. Okay, it goes on to say, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So what we get from this is that there are lots of people out there that will, will not read the Bible, or will not read it correctly. And there are lots of people out there that read it a little bit, and they just don't get fed enough. They get on the milk, but then they don't really get the meat. So my encouragement is that we read the Bible on a daily basis and that we get into the Word of God you know, profusely. Of course, this sermon is only applicable to believers, to saved people, those that have trusted Jesus Christ alone for their salvation. So that's all I have. Let me close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says on this very important subject. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name.